220 million years ago, Arizona was in the tropics. It was located in southwestern Pangaea, just north of the equator, and was home to a rainforest full of Triassic trees nearly 200 feet tall. These trees would have been mostly coniferous because flowering plants wouldn't evolve for several million more years. These trees would mostly have belonged to the species Arocarioxalon arizonicum, but there would have been some Woodworthia arizonica and Schilderia adamanica as well, along with a wide array of Triassic flora and fauna. Today, these trees are extinct, and Arizona is no longer a tropical rainforest. But that doesn't mean you can't still see them. All you have to do is visit Petrified Forest National Park. Hello and welcome to National Park Diaries. My name is Cameron. This is a channel dedicated entirely to telling educational, informative stories about national parks, public lands, and protected areas from around the world. If that sounds like something you would be interested in, do consider subscribing and hitting the little bell thing so that you don't miss an episode. For those of you who would like to support my endeavor to teach people about the wonders of parks and conservation more directly, I do have a Patreon, which you can check out in the link below. And lastly, before we dive into the rest of this story, I do want to give a shout out to The Real Deal for suggesting a story on Petrified Forest. Thank you, and as always, viewer suggestions are welcome. You can leave them in the comments down below. Okay. Now back to the story. Yes, Arizona used to be a lush tropical rainforest filled with towering Triassic trees. Today, it is not that, but the remnants of this forest can still be seen in Petrified Forest National Park in North Central Arizona in the form of, well, a petrified forest, the largest concentration of petrified wood anywhere in the world. Petrified logs scattered all across this landscape, preserving in stone the last vestiges of that Triassic rainforest. Now, petrification is actually kind of a cool process, at least in geologic terms. If you're a student at Hogwarts, maybe not so much. I think he's been petrified, Madame But geologically, yeah, it's pretty awesome because it is basically the process of turning a living thing into a piece of rock by replacing all of that living thing's organic matter, like the stuff that even makes it alive in the first place, with a mineral. In the case of the petrified forest of Arizona, that mineral is quartz, which is made up of silica or silicon dioxide. We'll talk about how all of this happens in a minute, but I first want to talk to you about why petrification is such a big deal and why having a place like Petrified Forest is so important to understanding what the Earth was like hundreds of millions of years ago. See, petrification is a type of fossilization. The petrified logs found here are, again, the preserved remnants of an ancient forest. They are fossils. And fossils help us understand all sorts of things about what our planet looked like thousands and millions of years in the past. But the thing about fossils and the fossilization process is it's really hard to find like complete detailed remains. We often find things in fragments and pieces and have to kind of infer what the whole thing might have looked like. Sometimes you don't even find a part of the organism itself. You find its footprints or its poop. These are called trace fossils. Other times you'll find a mold or a cast of an organism. You can think about this like jello. So you can find just the jello mold, or if you're lucky, you can find the jello itself, which has been shaped by the mold. In the case of fossils, you can find the impression left behind by an organism, which allows you to see the shape of what that organism might have looked like. That would be the mold. Or you can find the filled in mineralized remnants of the organism left behind in that impression. This would be the jello itself. In each of these cases, though, you're really only seeing what's left on the outside, the external physical features that have been fossilized. And of course, this is really important, and these types of fossils have helped geologists throughout the centuries learn many, many things 
about our ancient planet. But with petrification, you can get a full internal as well as external fossilization of an organism. In other words, you get to see exactly what the organism looked like inside and out. It's just made of rock instead of all the living parts that would have made it up had it been alive. This is really important for geologists because it gives them unprecedented access to the inner workings of organisms that lived hundreds of millions of years ago and helps us understand a lot about how these organisms were operating and what the world they lived in looked like back then. This is an indispensable tool that gives us an incredible level of insight into our ancient planet and the organisms that lived on it. And petrification, as well as the preservation of this landscape so that we can study the things that have been petrified, reason number one million why national parks are good, is what allows us to do that. Okay. But how does this whole petrification thing work? How did we go from ancient tropical rainforest full of living trees to a barren desert full of fossilized ones? Well, in this rainforest, there would have been rivers and the trees of this rainforest would have fallen into these rivers and then they would have been submerged and covered up really quickly with the sediment that these rivers were carrying. Side note, the pace at which this happened was also crucial here. See, if the trees had fallen and hadn't been buried very quickly by sediment, the normal process of decomposition would have been allowed to happen because they would have been exposed to oxygen and the microbes that are responsible for the normal decomposition process. Think any dead decaying log that you've seen on a hike. But because these trees fell in the river and were buried very quickly in sediment, that normal decomposition process could not happen. Instead, the process of petrification was able to take place over the course of millions of years. See, the river that these trees fell into was laden with silica or silicon dioxide, which had entered the rivers as a result of volcanic eruptions in this area and which was carried to the rivers via the wind. Once the silica entered the water, it dissolved in the water and then, over time, that water seeped through the layers of sediment which had buried these logs and eventually leached its way into the logs themselves, entering every pore and even the areas within and between cells. At this point, remember, the water is still saturated with that silicon dioxide which makes up quartz. So when that water eventually evaporates, what's left over is that silicon dioxide which crystallizes to form quartz. And it does this as the water has permeated every little opening and pore it can find within this log, inundating the entire thing with these tiny little quartz crystals. In this way, over millions of years, every single cell in this log was replaced with a quartz crystal, giving way to a new log, a brand new log made entirely of quartz. This log is now petrified. It is an exact copy of the original log. All of its internal and external structure is preserved. Everything looks the same. It's just made out of quartz now. And when you repeat this process for the many, many logs that fell in these rivers, you get a petrified forest. Now, quartz itself is mostly clear, but the logs you'll find at Petrified Forest National Park are multicolored and really beautiful. And that has to do with impurities in the quartz. See, that water that infiltrated these logs wasn't saturated with pure silica. There were little remnants of iron and manganese and other elements in the water as well. So they lent their color to the quartz as this process went on over time. Another important thing to remember here too is that the petrified forest still had to be unearthed for us to see it. Remember that they were buried under all that sediment, which at the same time the logs were being petrified over that same time period, these sediments were being lithified into sedimentary rocks. Only after those rocks were exposed to the vast erosional processes that shaped this area of modern Arizona was the petrified forest brought to the surface. Also, if you're wondering why the logs all look like they've been perfectly cut by some ancient lumberjack, that's because of the erosion and uplift and settling of this area over millions of years. Quartz is pretty brittle and breaks easily when exposed to these types of forces, so that's why they appear to be so neatly 
cut. And I hope this goes without saying, but please don't remove any of the petrified wood if you visit Petrified Forest National Park or any fossil you find in any park for that matter. For one thing, it is illegal, and for another, this prevents somebody else from having that same magical experience in a national park in the future. Petrified Forest has already had a really tough time with theft over the years. Let me know if you want a video on that. And we've actually already seen on this channel what can happen when a park like this is not properly cared for. So yeah always leave no trace. And that's everything I have for you today. Uh, do like and subscribe and hit the little bell thing if you want to see more stories from the world's protected places. Uh, let me know if you've ever been to Petrified Forest and seen the Petrified Logs. Seems like something that's super cool and I would love to get out there and see it myself one day. Um, check out my Patreon if you would like to support me more directly. And if you would like, you can follow me on Instagram. It's the best place to get in touch with me and to keep up to date with channel happenings and like park visits when I go on travel and do stuff like that. So follow me on Instagram if you would like. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.